He made headlines when he gave up his pro football career to join the Army, and today we learned he was killed in a firefight in Iraq. The Pentagon received word early this morning that, in fact, Pat Tillman, the former NFL star turned Army Ranger, had been killed in a combat operation along the Afghan-Pakistan border yesterday. Pat Tillman was a true American hero. He wasn't afraid to say what he felt and then to back it up with his deeds. He strongly believed in his family and his country. He lived for the former. He died for the latter. I've been a strength and conditioning coach for both individual athletes and team sports for over 30 years. I've known Pat since he was in uh, college at ASU, so I had known Pat for several years. He initially came to me, he had heard about me through a mutual friend, and he wanted to run a marathon. Pat was a different kind of football player, different kind of human being. Um, in the offseason, he liked challenges. He um, liked to break away from the traditional training for football, and he liked to do things that would challenge him. So we trained him up, and he went out and ran a marathon and enjoyed it and had a great time, and uh, then went back into another season of NFL. And then he came to me again, and this time he said he wanted to do an Ironman triathlon. His strive for excellence was, was top notch. He, whatever he wanted to do, he wanted to be really good at it. All of that being said, he was one of the kindest people I've ever known. And Pat used to come into the gym that I was training clients and I would mix him in with a group of six housewives for a nine o'clock kind of strength cardio session and nobody would even know who he was. He would stay anonymous, I wouldn't play it up, and he did the workout with the five, six housewives and said, see you Wednesday. So I really appreciate that part of Pat, where he was just true to himself and um, didn't try to make him out to be something that he wasn't. I get a phone call from Pat, which uh, wasn't typical, and he says, come on down into the parking lot, I need to talk to you. So I was a little worried at first, um, not knowing what to expect. So I go down there, Pat's waiting for me. He says, come on, sit in my car with me. I get in his car with him. I'm really not knowing what he's gonna um, say to me. And he says, because of 9-11, I feel like I owe it to my country and uh, I'm gonna enlist in the army and I wanna become an army ranger um, and I'm gonna enlist for three years. So my goal then at that point became to really keep it confidential and to train him up the best I could. Pat was um, an extraordinary person. I don't know how else to put it. He set his mind on something and he went 100% to achieve and accomplish what it was that he set his mind on. So I tried to break Pat several times. One of my stories is I put him on a treadmill. I made him run backwards. I put the treadmill at 6% and I made him do it for, I think it was eight or 10 minutes. And I told him he couldn't raise his voice, he couldn't raise his temper, he couldn't swear, he couldn't even talk during that whole time. And uh, he did it, he wasn't happy about it, but um, I was trying to take him to a place physically and mentally that I knew he would then be more prepared for when he got into the boot camp situation. He was definitely prepared and ready to go. Uh, he was in amazing shape probably better than his NFL shape. And at that time, I pretty much got to where, okay, Pat's gonna go do his three years and he's gonna come back. And in fact, we made a pack before he left that together we would do the Hawaiian Ironman. That was kind of, uh, okay, bro, when you come back, let's, let's, let's train together, let's go to Hawaii, let's compete in the Ironman together. Uh, had no reservation that he wouldn't come back at all. It was April 22nd, 2004, 
And I was home, I had just come back from a run and showered and uh, ready to start my day down at the gym with clients. And uh, I got a phone call from somebody that I hardly ever talked to on the phone, a friend of mine. And he said, did you hear the news? And he said, Pat was just confirmed killed in Afghanistan in a firefight. So um, at first it kind of just was numb feeling for me. A little bit more into it, I started to get a little bit more solemn and um, and uh, I had a pretty rough time kind of coming to grips with it for several weeks. It was just real hard to deal with the fact that he was dead and he was gone and he wasn't coming back and all the plans we had were now gone and his newly married bride was not going to see him anymore and his family and so it was pretty rough once the reality set in. I think it was three weeks after Pat's passing, um, it, it came to me that I needed to do the Hawaiian Iron Man and I needed to do it in Pat's name and honor Pat in doing it. At the time, I had probably done, well, I'd done several Ironmans, six, seven, eight. Um, and my focus and my motivation was at a whole new level. Um, every time I raced or trained, I had something on that had Pat's name and Pat's number on it. And uh, I know in Hawaii, I was dressed out in, in some Pat paraphernalia. And uh, I really did take that several months of training and devote it to Pat and really felt like I was doing the Ironman for him. I actually tried to have his name recorded as the finisher instead of mine. They wouldn't let me do it, but um, that's where my heart was at. It was at um, doing this in Pat's honor. This is for you, Pat. And so um, 2004, October, which was about five or six months after Pat's death, I got to race the Hawaiian Ironman and uh, cross the finish line with Pat's game jersey. I watched Pat when I was around him, and how he treated people was with complete respect and integrity. And uh, I learned that from Pat, and it actually got hammered home pretty, pretty hard when he was killed. It really made me reflect on him and the values that he had in life and how he treated other people. Um, and it really has had a lasting effect on how I live my life. Thank you.